Hello there folks, Kirk here with Kirk Giordano, Mastery. What we're going to do today is we're going to remove some of this ceiling here and another spot over there. I had a hanging chair, I came here last week and looked at it. It had a big wooden, beautiful hanging chair. And husband and wife sit on it and what happens is that hanging chair moves the studs. Say you have uh, in your rafter studs, you have say a 2x6, 2x8, 2x12, doesn't matter. Once all that weight is on that uh, swinging chair, back and forth, that stud flexes a little bit. And what happens is this pops off. Uh, so I tell them it's just this top piece, the top coat that's coming off. I actually yanked a little piece off to uh, check it out. Uh, and then we have another area here where it's uh, actually buckling from the stucco. So I tell them it's a quick fix, probably take me an hour, probably take me longer to cover and dash than to do the actual work. And what I'm going to do is, I just expect it to come off about here to about here. Uh, maybe uh, two feet by the entire length, or six feet here. Um, and then I have this hole right here. I expect a circle about like this. This is actually um, caused from uh, the just natural buckling. This again is, is from that hanging chair. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to pull this off here and, and Dan just said, well, Dad, how do you know that's all where it's going to stop and start? I'm guessing 30 years, I've pulled about 50 of them off. I'm just guessing to the best of my knowledge, I'm pulling so many off. The ceiling, the house, everything looks really, really stable. So anyhow, this is all I'm going to do right here. I'm just going to take it off. I figured it's going to come this way, it's going to come this way about a foot. So, see right there, it's pretty tight. That's tight. I expected that. But sometimes we're wrong, and uh, I've done this with it. I can be wrong, but I expected it to be stable here. Just where that stud is. The stud is here, they're going this way. So, when you're rocking the tube on that chair, the stud just flexes. Anyway, that's what this one. Over here, probably want to back up, like say, right to here, Jay. Now this guy here, yeah, move over there, please. This guy here, I expect this one just to come about right here. I can see the buckling. And this is uh, this is different from that. It could be caused from the same thing, messing around on that swing. I told him get a swing that's freestanding. Anyhow, so I'm gonna pop this guy out here. We're just gonna put these two back together. So here's what you do. Tap it. Tap it. Now, I expect a certain amount to come off. I'm going to go ahead and continue to remove this and I'll show you how we put this stuff back together too. Alright guys, we've broken off all the loose stuff and I'm putting this plaster weld. This is uh, uh, can be used for this to adhere the next finish on here. We got this patch here and then we have that slide patch over there. Dan said, well why don't we just do the whole ceiling? <laughs> because you're not paying for it. These folks are. I always give people the uh, option. Hey, if you like, I'll remove the entire ceiling. Or we can just do the couple hundred dollar patch. So they asked me, what would you do? And I said to my, to them, not too bad. It's just get rid of the hanging chair. You can still see this bracket here and this bracket here. That was a, uh, that was a heavy chair plus with the weight of uh, two or three people. That's what's doing this. I've seen some other patches here and there, and I said, well, you can still get a lot of life out of this. Uh, a couple hundred bucks, we can do this, or we can tear the whole thing off for more expensive So That's where skill comes into play as far as to determine how much to take off. And so I'm using my better judgment of how much to take off. Now the rest won't chip off. Doesn't mean 10 years from now it won't come off, but right now it's pretty sturdy. So Jay is going to put that camera down, he's going to mix me up some mud, and I'm going to go ahead and mud this out. Okay guys, doing the second coat now. Then we're gonna float this. This is a heavy dash finish. Uh, gotta get this time to set up. Alright guys. Now that this one is set, we can take a sponge with water. We get our perimeter joint first. I don't want to put my sponge dead center yet. I want to get these joints coming in. Of course, we're always multitasking. Jay's mixing, Dan's actually on the camera. Uh, a lot of mess just to do a little patch here. You've got to cover the whole floor. 
pull off the scum. That's what these guys help me with. I do the technical stuff a lot of times. Okay, so we got that perimeter. Now we're doing this perimeter. Just like this. I'm feathering these joints real well. There you have it. Now I'm going to work my interior, the body of this. A lot of water because it's a heavy, well, it's a medium gas finish, but a heavy, heavy float. Okay. This is the float. I've got a lot of water on here. I want circular motions. I want to push it up. I don't want it to fall on my head. It's just mine. Here we go. So I want to push it up. I'm pushing it up. I'm actually using about 15 pounds of pressure. Say about a lifting weight, 15 pounders. That's what, that's what I'd be doing. About 15 pounds over my head. I'm pushing it because this is hitting those studs. It's hitting my plaster weld. I want it to be here. I just put this on. So there you have the float. The last thing I'm going to do is dash it. That means I'm going to go upside down and throw mud on it. Okay guys, the same applies to this tack here. Now, I do my perimeter, and then I come in to the middle. Dan's actually videoing this one. Jay's mixing me up. Oh, about two more hops. Now, I almost got this. Here, it's only a quarter inch for there. It's about uh, seven eighths. I feather in my joint. This is what determines how well this patch is going to come out. And these guys who did these other patches here, uh, well, I can notice it. They just didn't feather in the joints very well. But a little one you can get away with. If you try to get away with a big, big patch like this where it's almost uh, four feet by three, it's going to be noticeable unless you feather in your joints very, very well. You're going to be right on the money. Now, I'm flat and my float is flat. I'm not, I don't have my float this way, it's completely flat. Float in this joint, and I push it up, otherwise it does have a tendency to fall. All right guys, I'm finishing up the float on both of these little patches. One of the benefits of being, uh, the only benefit about being really tall is, man, I don't need a ladder to get to the ceiling, and I can see what I'm doing down here a little bit better without standing on this stool. This advantage of being tall is, man, I got to bend down for everything. You name the sink, <laughs> kitchen sink, we got to bend for everything. Anyway, here we are floating it out. We're bringing this aggregate out. We're bringing this aggregate out. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and dash it now. All right, guys, now we're doing the fun stuff. I'm dashing. I'm dashing. This is one of the hardest things to do, dash upside down. but. I've done it a lot of times. It's kind of messy, but as soon as we pull all this paper out of here, clean up this floor, I'm going to hose down this painted surface. It may get a little messy at first, but it won't stick because I'm going to catch it in time. So dip it in the bucket. It's getting a little bit of sand out of here with this soupy mud. Makes it consistent because it looks like it's matched on the money. And uh, it's not. But I want my patch better than the other fellow's patch. He didn't dash. Anyhow, uh, we're going to clean up and I'll show you the results. All right, guys, we are complete. Patch work here. I can't even notice it. This one here is a big one, but it's right on the money. I can't even notice it. Uh, as soon as it dries, it's going to be right on the money. Here's a tip for you guys if you're ever doing this kind of stuff. The cements we use, whether it's Portland cement or uh, any of the rapid set cements, if they hit the porch, most of the porch paints. Say if I leave stucco on this porch for more than 15 minutes, the paint will peel. So we always cover the floors. And then when I was just dashing, what I did was we went into the very end. I dashed and I got a little mud on some of these. No, it's easy to take the water hose and just hit them like this. Hit them like this. And come down. I've not hurt anything, and it's, a, it's so much faster. It's just a technique I've been using for about 20 years. Anyhow, uh, we do a nice cleanup job, as I said before. I've never gotten yelled at for leaving a job too clean. My name is Kirk. My two sons, Dan and Jay, would thank you folks for watching. As usual, we'll see you guys on the next one.